Uh, this is my first YouTube video for quite a while now, and I wanted to just get to the point of, because uh, let's, let's put it to something different. Quite often, I get asked the question, is there any point in a DSG remap? So when I get my car tuned, stage one tuned, stage two tuned, whatever you want to call it, stages is hardware and everything else. But, you know, will it make any difference if I get my box map too? Now, the answer to that is yes. Now, the problem with tuning today is not a lot of it is explained. You don't know what's actually going on when someone sits in your car, opens up the laptop and does whatever they're doing. Now, there's different, obviously there's different kind of remaps. There's the, the off-the-shelf remaps like APR, Revo, people like that. TVS do, bo do good box tunes. There's a lot of off-the-shelf stuff which is well used, well developed. Uh, these guys spend a lot of time on doing the DSG maps and everything else. They, they have to travel all over the world, obviously get different climates, different road types, and everything else that comes into it to be able to offer you a tuning solution for your gearbox. Okay? Which is, you know, it's very good. It's very good at what it does. But what is it that it is? You know, what is it that people do? What have you got available? What What is a DSG remap? When, how does it benefit me? There's all the kind of questions I kind of get all the time. Now, when you're tuning a car, say if you're, like in a manual, you've tuned your engine, you know, you've got more RPM, you've got, you've got different torque bands and everything else. Now, in a manual, you can change in your head when you feel you need to change. So as your power starts dropping off, you know, you know, I, I want to change now. You know, I'm going to hold it out. I can hold my car out now to like 7,000 RPM before I change gear because I'm still in the power band. Now, the DSG works pretty much like that, but it's set to what you're allowed to change to. Now, if I just have a flick through here. So here we have the shift points. So this is the maps for the shift points. So this is from first to second in the eco, second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth, 56th, I'm sure it's 6th to 7th, no, and then it switches over to normal. So then you've got normal mode, 1st to 2nd, 2nd to 3rd, 3rd to 4th. So all, all your modes are pretty much laid out, okay? They're laid out in a map structure. So when, when we come to tune these cars, this is where we change the shift points. So you take it out on the road and you're, you know, you're changing, say, say we're in, let's switch to a normal. So say we're in normal mode, so 3rd to 4th in normal mode. At most, it's going to change on the kick down. 110% is kick down. At most, it's going to change this 6,600 6, RPM. So I'm flat out on the throttle. I'm still in the torque band because I've got more power now because we've turned it up with the car with the, with the engine tune, and it's now going to change at six. Well, it's still going to change at 6,600 RPM. So no matter what I've done to the engine, no matter I've made you know stage one tune, I could have moved the RPM from say 6,800, 6,500, wherever they are to 7,000, 7,200, because I've got more power. I can make the power. But with a DSG car, it's still going to change. Like even though you've moved it in your engine tune, the DSG is still set to change at those points. So even if you're flat out, you know, you kick down, the car's going mad, you're, flat, you're smashing through the gears, you're still only going to change at 6,600 RPM. And also... You might notice when you're cruising around, you know, you're, you're on the, the normal A roads and B roads, and you're just cruising around, you might see that your you car can't, can't quite decide what gear it wants to be in. So you could keep going between second, third, third, fourth, third, fourth, and back to foot, back to third, back to second, to third. Now you normally get this on a, on a golf fire and cars like that, around 30 to 35 miles an hour, where you can't quite decide what gear it's in. Now again, that's these maps, so you can have a there's a shift up map and there's a shift down. So you've got third to second normal. And these work exactly the same. So sorry, you've got your kick down, you've got your hundred percent. So that's your throttle position. And then you've got newton meters. So you pretty much sit on this. So you're gonna sit on this line at that, that throttle position. So it's gonna check tell you when to change. Now, with a standard car, which is what this is set to. That's great, you know, it, it's it's livable. 
even it might be some little niggles and things like that which is what us tuners find and change and adjust and make better for the stock car or stage one car but this is how we do it we come into these maps and we change where the shift point actually is going to take place so we can look at with you know if it's if it's going to third second second third third second then we can we can look at where in the throttle by logging the car and changing the position of when it changes gear so I might want to stay in the third a little bit longer so I could bump this, bump this up or take it down. You know, there's all these things we can do with the DSG box. So when we're tuning the DSG, this is a small part of it. Bear in mind, like this is this is just your shift point. So and also if you if you change your turbo, your turbo is going to react differently to the stock turbo. So all these again, these maps become obsolete because the the, the change points and everything else could be in completely the wrong position which is what we find out when we tune it so if when you go to a custom tuner you know you can sit in the car if you're having a stage one tune like you, there's, there's a couple of different ways tuners will do it the majority will have made their own tune you know they've, they've had a car themselves they've had a golf r s3 or whatever in a gti <coughs> whatever car that might be and they have made their own maps around their maps so they've, they've wrote their stage one tune great for a manual car apart from the clutch so they might have capped it a little bit for the clutch if you've got stock clutch and things like that but it's great for the car but the dsg is holding them back so then they come into these maps and they make the you know a good tuner will go into these maps and they'll make these maps around their tune so like an apr stage one tune will be for an apr stage one map they'll work hand in hand but any issues they've found when it's they've tuned in the engine they've also adjusted the dsg to go in line with the engine which that is a good tune now I see a lot of maps when they when people know what the maps are because of whatever software they're using and they'll just come and I'll just change say like these which is fine you know they'll, they'll change the highest RPM points and I'll leave everything down here so you've still got your annoying cruise maps and things like that that's when you've got you know you've got your difference between a an everyday tuner to just load maps write them smashes on cars off you go yeah it's great and then you've got your, your tuner who cares a little bit more and who's work with the software longer i mean it could take you you know anywhere from two three someone to even six months to develop the map for this now the oem themselves they, they would have had a team of eight engineers working on these for about eight months to a year you know that that's the kind of level of work that goes in, into an oem tune people don't quite under you know realize that and they, they just think they can pull up to a tuners and you know, it's a brand new car, and they'll, oh yeah, they'll have done a map for that, and they'll go and smash a map on, they'll go onto wherever, find a map for it, and bang it on, which is, you know, nine times out of ten, it's fine for a stage one, but they could be better, it can always be better, which is where tuning comes into play. <coughs> so this is just a simple, you know, this is just fourth to fifth in normal mode, so if I've set the engine to 7,000, well, to be fair, you've always, on the DSG, you've always got to set the engine way above your DSG. If you've got your engine RPM too close to your DSG or less than your DSG, then you're obviously the, the engine will kick in first because it'll use the minimum. So if you've got your engine set to 6, 4,000 RPM and yet you've got your DSG to set to 6, 6,000 RPM, it won't change gear. It'll just hang there on a rev limiter of the engine rev limiter. So we'll set the engine to say 7,500 RPM. So it's it's quite out of the way. It's gone. And then we come into this tune, then we can set this one to 7,200 RPM where we want to change it on full throttle. And you know that's great. That's that's tuning. So you now you've if you're using your entire rev range that you've got from your tune, which is what you want, right? Okay. Also in these maps, there's also map part. There's little two bit things here little little 2d things that are for like torque limiters and such forth so in here like here you got your easy launch control limiters we can change those esp on esp off hey we've got here you go here's a torque limiter so we've got an engine moment about speed so it's torque based on speed so it's set to 400 newton meters okay so if, even if I set my engine to, so I've tuned the engine and I'm, I'm putting out 450 newton meters, 500 newton meters, whatever that might be, you can still only ever get 400 newton meters because your, your gearbox is set 
to 400. So no matter what I do on my engine, the gearbox will still cap it because they talk to each other. The DSG talks to the engine and the engine talks back to the DSG. So it, it knows where both of them are. So again, if you don't get your DSG tuned with your engine tune, they're never going to be in sync, which is always, you know, it's always a great thing to do. What else we got? Oh, also, shift changing speeds. So the DSG also in the map has maps for how fast it can change shifts. So how fast is my shift actually going to be? So when you go from, this is switching times in sport mode. So if we look at the sport mode switching times, let's get that back up. If we look at the sport mode switching times and say, yeah, Triptronic, Eco. Yeah, let's look at the Eco. Probably not a good one. If we look at so torque reduction, tip drive and torque reduction, switching time sport, switching time to eco. So if we look at these two here, look. If we've got the sport mode and the eco mode, you can see straight away how fast, how much faster the sport is compared to the eco. Now this this is what the manufacturer's done to make you feel like when you're in sport mode. It feels amazing, it changes fast, it, it revs higher, all these kind of things. Now we can go even further into this and make them even quicker, okay? So we can make your eco the same as your sport, we can make your eco faster than your sport, we can make your eco faster, your normal faster, and your sport even faster. There's lots of things we can do with this. As long as it's fast and it's well, slow enough for the clutch to be able to engage itself, then we can push the li limits. On, on say a stage one you're looking around 10 percent quicker 10 to 15 percent faster shifts which it makes all the difference so if you're if you've got your draggy out and you're nailing it down the strip you want those gears to change as fast as possible in the perfect position so you stay on boost you stay on the power so you get the best times this is what dsg tuning is all about it's making it as fast as we, well, fast as we can making it rev to the points we want to rev it to and then obviously there's maps for well we kind of maps for doing the the clamping pressure and all these kind of things all in here okay so they work hand in hand with your ecu on your engine so no matter what you do to your engine you will always be limited by your gearbox so anyone out there who's looking at getting a, a tune and having their you know the, the stage one done and got a dsg diesel petrol whatever have a think about your gears even if, if you go to a place where they actually tune the car or even if they say they tune the car just just drive your car and write down what annoys you okay where, where does it where does it shift that really annoys you okay well I'm cruising along got third gear like I said before 30 mile an hour and it keeps changing up to fourth and back down to third and all that kind of stuff how you tune with this because we can adjust it if we haven't already come across it already then we can adjust for it, and it obviously it, it, it makes it better for everybody else. So always, you know, when you're going for your DSG tune and things like that, people like APR, they pretty much get rid of most of that. They're pretty good at stuff like that. So when you get a, a tune from them in other places that actually specialise in what you want, obviously the mixed tuners, there's, there's quite a few that all do multiple cars. They're not really specialists, but they should still be able to help with how you know you, you you want your gearbox done and things like that so just just make it tuning fun a little bit and make it more around you and the way that you, you want your car to work so always think about getting your dsg tuned every time you get your engine tuned just to keep it all in sync and all in line even if you have your engine tuned first then take it away drive it see what annoys you obviously the things like the gear changes at, at top level the maximum rpm and thing like that are going to annoy you obviously you're going to want them changing but just write it down see how you like it so see what your times are with draggy and things like that and then take it from there and drop it in the comments if you've, if you've gone somewhere and you've changed something and see what they've said okay so thanks for listening this is a dsg tune this is just a stock one this is what we see when we tune them, tune them. So of course something like this can't be done in half an hour it's something that we do over a certain amount of time a lot of it is by experience and driving the car so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then drop a subscribe. I'll be going into a lot more of this and showing you how we have to tune engines by 
getting them on the dyno, taking them out on the road, logging them, showing what we look for, what we don't look for, looking at engine hardware and things like that, just to give everyone a, a bit of, you know, a bit of knowledge. So what what do what actually goes on when we when people tune cars? What's available to us? What can we ask for? What can't we ask for? Why can't we ask for it? You know, all those kind of questions that I get asked quite a lot because there's not really much understanding around it. So hopefully we can get around that and start making people a little bit more interested and get people into tuning maybe. So thank you for watching the video. See you in the next one.